Do you know what month it is? No, 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 no. It's the month of Crash Bandicoot. Since the Insane Trilogy is coming out on the Switch this month, on the 29th of June, I decided to do a review of the Crash Bandicoot Trilogy on the Game Boy Advance. The true Crash Bandicoot Trilogy. Crash had three games on the Game Boy Advance. No, I'm not joking. I do remember back in the day my friend had one of the games, I thought that was it, you know, a one-off. But Crash had three, three frickin' games. They must have done well enough, you don't make free games if they sell like crap. There must be something about them. And when I looked up who the developer was, it's Vicarious Visions, the people who are doing the Insane Trilogy. What a coinkadink. It was just a coincidence, I'm not like, I'm gonna review some Vicarious Vision games. They seem to be some kind of low-key company, they made a lot of Game Boy games, like a lot of Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS titles. A crap ton, holy crap. They mainly just licensed games or an entry from an already established series like Crash Bandicoot. No wonder why I never heard of them, it's mainly just handheld products from them. I should get this out of the way first. The reason why I don't want to review the original PlayStation trilogy is because I don't want to spoil the Insane trilogy. And then also, I don't want my whole review to be like, Oh, they made this little change, they made this, and then I'm just bitching about that for 10 minutes. I just wanted to come in fully surprised and all that good stuff. So the first game in the true trilogy is called Crash Bandicoot The Huge Adventure. The huge adventure. This is not some ordinary adventure, this is a huge adventure. So let's get into this mother bitch. Alright, the story goes that Cortex shrinks planet Earth. I guess that's why it's called the huge adventure. Get it? Because he makes the Earth small, so it's ironic. Anyway, and then Coco's like, uh, um, uh, yeah, just, uh, collect these gems and I can reverse it. And that's pretty much it. 10 out of 10, story of the year. Okay, I'm not much of a story guy, so I don't really care. Story isn't that important, especially for platformers. I know, I know, some games are based around story, like point and click adventure games and all that. It's fine, but personally, I'm just not into it. Let's go to the actual important stuff, the gameplay. It's Crash Bandicoot 2 and 3 put together. The level themes are mostly from there, and even the music is the same, but of course, with the Game Boy Advance quality sound. It's simple, you go from point A to point B and you collect a gem along the way. It's kind of pointless having the gem. You can never really miss it and they don't make it hard to get, just like in Crash 2 and 3. They could have just given it to you at the end, but it's just there for story purposes, I guess. The level design is decent. There's the boxes, the TNT, the nitro. Sometimes you have to blow up some boxes to get through. <laughs> about killing yourself. They repeat a level theme, but they make it different enough, but it's not super different to anything. Oh look, look! See these monkey bars? You don't have to hold a button. It automatically grabs on. If you're watching Retro Studios, that's how you do it. Gripping onto a button gives you carpal tunnel syndrome. I bet all the employees at Retro have messed up wrist after testing their games because they have to hold onto buttons for so damn long. Anyway, as for the swimming controls, they're actually pretty good. They're a little slow, but you move surprisingly well. Also, Retro, if you're still watching, when Crash does a spin attack, he doesn't go out of control. So yeah, another lesson to learn from Crash Bandicoot. I think the Donkey Kong Country games are better. But anyway, it has a pretty nice mix of things to do, and I was quite surprised at the bear riding stuff. You get chased by this yeti, and it has this pseudo 3D background. Pretty cool. It works well and you get enough time to react and all that. And then there are parts like Star Fox where you're wearing a jetpack and shooting a bunch of crap. And that was a lot of fun as well. Didn't expect that. The enemy variety is good, some enemies you have to jump on, some you have to spin at, some you have to slide under, some are really annoying like those damn birds that keep killing me for some reason, even though I swear I jumped on top of them. It's all good stuff, it's all solid, it doesn't do much wrong. Of course there's the boss fights, they're okay, there's a good variety, some are fairly tough, others are pretty easy. The thing with this game is that it gets difficult quite quick. After World 2 or Area 2, whatever you call it, the difficulty spikes up and it's actually a challenging game compared to what I remember about Crash 2 and 3. I thought they were pretty easy. A surprise for sure, but a welcome one. After you beat a boss, you get a new ability like in Crash 3. Sometimes you have to use them, and sometimes they're just there to make your normal gameplay experience easier, like a power-up in a Mario game. That's sort of it. There's the bonus stages, all the Crash Bandicoot stuff you come to expect. Now the bad stuff. 
the bad. The bad. All right, so the bad stuff. Okay, some of the water levels have these real empty areas. Look at this. Like, what's the point of this? Why can't you just cut that out? Why? And there's some parts that took me a little while to figure out what to do. I don't recall that happening in the original Crash Bandicoot games. This one part with these eels, I'm like, how do I get past these assholes? Do I make this mine follow me and crash into them? Then I realized I just had to spin into them. And then I'm like, I'm such an idiot. It was kind of my own fault. You can't blame the developer for me being that stupid. After you beat one of the bosses, you get a double jump. It's kind of awkward. In most games when you have the double jump, you can double jump wherever, but this one, you have to do it at the peak arc of his jump. You have to do it at the top. There's a certain frame where you can do the double jump. It's weird and takes some getting used to. A good game lets you do it wherever you want. As I mentioned before, the game gets difficult quick. It doesn't easy into that crap. The main bad thing is that the game just isn't that engaging. There's nothing really wrong with it, but at the same time, it doesn't keep your interest up that much. And I was trying to think, why? Because it seems to do everything right. Maybe it's because it repeats level themes too often, and they're just a little too similar. They don't have enough differences to keep you surprised. In the Donkey Kong Country games, every level has some unique gimmick that really changes things up. Even if it repeats a level theme, it still manages to feel completely different. This one doesn't do enough to change. I think that's what the problem is. And then there's this part where I still don't know how to make this freaking jump. I just kept on dying and running into this nitro. I don't know, it doesn't teach you well. The game doesn't teach you much. I had to look up on the internet how to do certain moves. There's the afterwards content, you can collect all the boxes, you can do the time troll mode where you hit boxes to stop time. I never found that stuff fun in the originals and it's the same here. I just can't be bothered. Not all games are equal in 100% in. I never found these games fun to 100% because I was always satisfied with the bare minimum. He crawls so slow, I mean, come on Crash, come on, can you move a little faster? I've got a family here, I've got a wife and kids, can't spend this whole game with you crawling under this thing. Come on, hurry up, hurry up! Last of all, you would think of the whole huge adventure thing would be one of those games where you're big and everything else is tiny. Nah, everything is just normal size. What a wasted opportunity. Imagine you could go through China and jump on all the buildings and stuff, like Godzilla. Now the good. It's just a solid game all round. It controls well for the most part. The level design is good for the most part. The variety is good. For the most part, the graphics are pretty cool. It goes more in that Donkey Kong Country style. It's alright, it's good for Game Boy Advance standards. I still prefer the DKC art style though. The music is okay, it's typical Crash Bandicoot. It's that unique style. It's good, but not amazing. It never hits the feels with me, but it's always catchy. Would I recommend this? Yeah, sure if you're a Crash Bandicoot fan. It's an okay game. I wouldn't say it's bland, but I wouldn't say it's great or amazing. You wouldn't trip an old granny to get this game. It's not that kind of amazing. Just uh, emulate it, play it for a little bit, have a little bit of fun, it's decent. See you my good old scholars, bye. Subscribe.